Seamus. I'm Rich Garn. And I'm Sean Connery. You, sir, oh. are a liar. <laughs> uh, you yeah, we are in conviction? the... We are in the final push of Fallout 3. This is it, the last episode. After this, there's no more bitching, no more moaning, no more complaining about Swiss cheese plots or horrible dialogue or railroading. So if you've enjoyed that stuff, um, I, I pity you. But it's all coming to an end. the next game, Hajit. Well, there's always no mutants allowed if you're really into that sort of thing. Then again, um, don't 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 take me that as me actually recommending you go to No Mutants Allowed, because I mean, I think you can actually get arrested for that in the state, uh, condoning what? the use of No Mutants Allowed in any sense. You know, No Mutants Allowed were my only friends when I did my critique of Fallout 3 originally. I was hard on the game, and everybody just said I didn't know how to have fun, and that I was a big killjoy. I believe yeah. this playthrough has vindicated me. It, it has. And don't be and believe me, I, I'm not saying some of their complaints aren't valid. Uh, it, it's really more that if you really... W I mean... Again, they a lot of the things they say about Fallout are absolutely, are absolutely true. But, you know, a lot of the stuff that it does, like that it does badly, were done well in Fallout 1 and 2. And a lot of the stuff that it did well had nothing to do with Fallout 1 and 2. It's a That's very That's an excellent game. way of putting it. Yeah. But the problem is, whereas most people can say, alright, so not a great Fallout game, but a decent game. No mutants allowed. Instead, view it as heresy. This is blasphemy. This is desecration. This is something... Yeah, this is an offense worthy of castration. Are you implying it isn't? Only in some respects. Maybe I one think, of them. Yeah, I... I can understand that people get irritated with, uh... Well, you know, it doesn't have to be just like the originals for it to be good. Um, but it, I can never forgive the game for just being horrible at storytelling. The, the story in this game is really not worthy of a AAA company. Not even worthy of an indie company. This is just a terrible, terrible, filled with holes, poorly paced story with terrible dialogue. And I don't think you could convince me otherwise. There is fun, and I know it's, it's, we've said this in previous episodes, it's unfortunate that a lot of that can't be shown in this thing, but a lot of the fun parts of this game are things that wouldn't be, make for a very interesting walkthrough. And we did a little bit of it. We did a few subway tunnels. It's just so that you got the idea. That part of the game, I think, is fun. There's a lot of that in the game. And it works, but, you know, watching us do that for six hours, if you find that exciting, maybe you need to just go play the game. And let me clarify that my problem with the No Means Allowed attitude uh, isn't even just so much that, you know, that they're annoyed at the bad storytelling and stuff. It's that they have an ad. That they they have a sort of superiority complex because of it. They view this as yeah. a sign that yeah anybody who can enjoy this game is an inferior being. That you know that that yeah, they have a very much a sense of superiority over the people who play this game. And to be to be fair, I kind of feel sorry for those people. I mean. This was what this is what they had their hopes pinned on, and it's not like there's going to be another classic Fallout game anytime soon. Even another non like that type of game is basically gone forever, um, for for the foreseeable future. I'm not even talking about the Fallout license. I'm talking about that type of game just is not made anymore. And I think that, oh, that looks there's kinda... probably a there must be a lot of frustration, of that sort of frustration. The world of gaming has changed. It's not really economical to make those sorts of games anymore. I seem to have stirred up the hornet's nest. <laughs> I, and I'm right on board with that. I mean, if you look at the RPGs currently installed on my computer, uh, I've Fallout 2, uh, Arcanum, uh, you know, a, just a bunch of these really old RPGs of the classic style, that, you know, I'm very sad they don't make anymore. And if one of these came out, made today, even isometric, I think that isometric 2D games 
can have the capacity to be a lot more beautiful than top-down 3D games, you know, will often be made. Like, you know, if you, if you have a decent art budget, you can do a lot more with 2D than you can with 3D, is generally right. my impression. Yeah. But or it's no, not, maybe, maybe not that you can't, but typically oh. that's the result. It's true, although, uh, as has been pointed out, uh, Alexander Macris from The Escapist pointed this out, that the whole market is just so much bigger. And this is a, this is a lot of like how movie snobs talk about how Transformers 2 will sell like crazy, and yet something really quirky and clever and wonderful, but low budget with no explosions, will just be you know, completely overlooked, and they hardly ever make movies like that, but they'll make $200 stupid fests like Transformers. There is that that, that attitude that really stuff that a, appeals to the mass market doesn't appeal to us. I'm not going to be thrilled with Gears of War. I don't wish the Gears of War didn't exist. I just wish that there was room for uh, for my kind of RPGs. And so I can understand where some of the anger is. Yes. Especially for people that loved Fallout to the point where they would join a fan club, you know, join that website. Those are the real fans, and so they're really going to miss the game. And, we, you know, people talk about indies. Um, but even indies, I think, are having a hard time. Um, indies are a little smaller than... Oops, I used a stealth boy. Like, the Fallout team, I'm sure, was probably... Um, I don't know, but I'll bet you it was between 20 and 50 people, is my guess. And indies are topping out at like 10. So I think this is one of the painful things, is that AAA games are just, you know, that AAA game companies are not interested in making, I'm going to use this terrible term, thinking man's RPGs. And just forgive me for taking that, using that snobbish term. But that's kind of, you know... Those companies are too big for that. They don't have mass appeal. Your average action gamer isn't going to want that. So they don't make those sorts of games in AAA companies. And they're still a little bit too big for your your uh, your two and three man teams. You know, that you need somebody to make gorgeous graphics and brilliant writing and, you know, all the other things that go into one of these games. It'd be nice if, and this is just pure daydreaming now, I mean, I, I don't even know if this has any economic basis, but it'd almost be nice if a company like, uh, I don't know, Bioware, got a team together and, like, had a separate developing house, you know, a smaller one, like, you know, not the, not the one that they poured a huge amount of budget into working on this kind of game. It's uh, true, we'll, we'll I'd love... what they could do with that. Yes, I'd love to see them experimenting with it, and it's interesting we're talking about this, I just played, uh... Alien Swarm last night, and there was one, it was funded by Valve, not totally funded by Valve, it's really complicated, you can go read about it, I won't go into the whole thing now, but basically put out by Valve, is, and it's very experimental, it's overhead, basically a 2D sort of game. And I'm sure it didn't have anywhere near the budget of, say, you know, Half-Life or even Portal. This is, you know, a really much smaller type of game, and, and I do have a hope that we'll find those medium-sized projects, oh. that they'll be, that we'll have some room for games that are between, somewhere between the three-man teams and the hundred-man teams, that they'll, that they'll be able to make those uh, medium-sized games that appeal to smaller audiences. Eventually oh. they're gonna... Uh, eventually they're gonna just have killed to, me. because... That's a good question, actually. How did I... Did you do damage from that explosion? I, no, I, he I died after was... the explosion. Yeah, I... I... Know. Huh. That was weird. No idea. Uh, but the eventually they're gonna have... just decided to have a critical existence failure or something. <laughs> I think eventually they're gonna have to, because if you look at it, you know, AA games are very hit and miss, in a sense. You know, one of them That's will be true. mediocre, one of them will be a blockbuster, and if they're not a blockbuster, they're not really worth it. So, you know, it, a happy medium of profitable titles that aren't shovelware, I think will be desirable for the industry. I mean, again, I'm not a businessman. Uh, I'm, I'm just it's, a gamer. 
that's true if they if they scaled things back because we have medium sized movies. You know, there's the little indie three million dollar, ten million dollar movies, and then there's the you know two hundred million dollar Titanic or Avatar type movies. Um, but in between those, we have lots and lots of little twenty million dollar movies. Those. Uh, especially your rom-coms and things like that and there's room for that and right now we don't really have that in gaming I don't think or not uh, much it's all either just completely basement programmer indies or huge triple-a games and uh, maybe maybe there will you know I think there's room in the middle of the market and maybe some companies will find that space and maybe we'll start getting our classic fallout style games again but I don't see it somebody... happening. I don't see it happening really soon. No. And if anybody's gonna make that move to the mid market, it's probably gonna have to be somebody who's already established. Uh, because you yeah. know, the guy. You still the need to is yeah. this. That building. What the? It's a building. shuttle you're gonna crawler. Fight a you're gonna fight a building. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> you're just gonna hack at it with your little sword, or? Yeah, just gonna... Yeah, uh, see, look at me getting sneak attack criticals against the giant tank. Huh. So I assume we gotta crawl up and push its, uh, self-destruct button? Uh, not exactly. Oh! Bethesda, you're letting me down! This is an obvious cliche you're passing up! Yeah, <laughs> quick time event where you crawl up to the top of it and, like, tear out <laughs> its important circuitry. Then swan dive away while it explodes. Only game that can get away with that is Just Cause 2. Yes. Alright, for. Uh... Ooh, different! Whoa, that's some lighting right there. Man, is that some this purple is. Purple a... lighting? But this is getting funky! <laughs> Look at that blue, a blue force field kind of thing with yellow lighting on the other side. That's really striking. That is really cool, Bethesda. I knew you guys could do it. Ah. Ow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that, that, it would true. seem that, uh, that time charges don't kill the force fields all the way. This, uh, this part actually reminds me of the ending of the first Fallout. Of, did you mean to say the original Fallout? <laughs> yes, the original Fallout. In, in oh, a sense, like of the force fields. I was just thinking that myself. The force fields where there's some you can't go through at all, and then the other ones that you'll just take this dose of damage. And uh, that was an interesting approach oh. because... If you were just a big meathead of a character, that was your way through. Was to just walk through. <laughs> it was to just walk through those and take all that damage. But you know, if you were playing as a lunkhead, you could afford to take it. Um, yeah. And if you were a little, ha there was a way to get through for a hacker, and there was a way to get through with repair. Although the repair one was really <laughs> counterintuitive. It was like you had to use the walkie-talkie to open the force fields or something, I couldn't even... Oh, man. Why yeah, did everybody see me through my cloak? You could use repair I, uh, on the terminals, but the terminals would only be on one side Which, of the What did you do getting a job side. working on robot? That whole thing sucked. It was a good idea. I think that actually, Please. that's one thing the first Fallout did not execute well, was the whole force field thing. Wait, what is did that guy whining about? Panic? Uh, he's whining because he thinks I'm gonna hurt him, and then I said that I was, and, uh... I think and I just then he acted on that robot. knowledge? Yeah, and then he ran away. Sounds pretty logical, actually. Remarkably. You know what? I, there's no way this is unintentional. This, this has to be, like, a, a callback to the first Fallout game. Because there's even, like, the terminals you mess with right there. Yeah, it's definitely yeah. possible. It's kind of like an alien to realize that we hate where them they have and love the original Fallout. They have the elevator that goes downwards, like the freight elevator, with the head crabs jumping down on you. Then they have that same <laughs> level in Alien Swarm. Yeah. Yes. Time to take your medicine! It's 
may be the last time you go on a crazy drug bender, Josh. Yeah, live it up, Josh. It's gonna be no more drugs going forward. <laughs> well, except like in real life. Not gonna. I mean, I know you're living in. Not the gonna be. Not gonna be injecting yourself with any strange, unknown subjects, substances that might do horrifying things to your body. Well, I gotta save that for the later part of this level. Otherwise, I'll be all fucked up. <laughs> I just realized what, like, the, the that image of Reginald Cuthbert reminds me of. Uh, have you guys read The Truth by Terry Pratchett? No. No. There's this sort of lunk, like, lunkhead, um, like a thug, hitman, mercenary guy called Mr. Tulip, who's always just cramming weird substances into his body. He wants to be a drug addict, like he really wants to be, but he can't really find any, so he just crams everything into his system, and everything he, he gets his hands on, like mothballs, I don't want to sit down in the uh, fucking seat. Salts. That looks in fact, honestly, like, the, the illustrations done by Paul Kidby kind of look like Reginald Cuffbird. That's hilarious. Target may be in range. Enemy Doesn't have a chop stash though. We've that got was on there. that was hilarious. How that robot's gun was sticking through the door before you opened it. I was like, "What is that floating in front of you?" Yeah, it looked like a beetle was phasing through or something. And then I just remembered, no! Oh, it's a Bethesda game, it's just a glitch. You should make that person stop shooting you with that very dangerous gun. Well, it's not a person, so... It's but you did anyway. That dangerous. Oh! Yeah. You are about to die. Freaking plasma pistol? Back here. Oh. <laughs> How there much backstage have left? I can't read the display through uh, live, about live twenty ish. goggles. <laughs> okay, so you're not in any present danger. No. Yeah, before we begin this uh, recording session, I told Josh we need to go buy stim packs and he's like, We're fine. So we're gonna see which one of us is right. Me, I always, like, I felt like I was low any time I dipped below 30 stim packs. Even though I'd go through an entire dungeon and not use any. Oh, yeah, I was, I, I hoard stim packs. Yeah. Uh, in Fallout, I only got as high as, like, 80. I mean, Fallout 3. Uh, mostly I'd get over 100 in the original game. Hello. Actually, that's a good question. Why did they get rid of stim pack, uh, super stim packs in Fallout 3? Is just because, since it's not turn-based, you can just cram a bunch of stim packs down your gold at once uh, without yeah. any consequences. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. And with super stim packs, you know, if you take too many of them, they, they start hurting you, so... Yeah, I believe you can die when they wear off, because they give you bonus hit points, right? <laughs> Actually, um, what you can do is, they just start killing you, like, r reducing your hit points. So, if you need another NPC dead, uh, but you don't want the rep for killing him, you can just give him, like, a, cram a bunch of super stim packs into him. Just like, hey, buddy, let me start injecting you with these expensive medical <laughs> devices. Uh, yeah, I, that's okay. I, that's... Nonsense! You could always be more okay. I, I remember somebody posting the math on that. You have to look at them, see how many hit points you have, and that'll tell you how many stim packs you need to use on them in order to... super stim packs it would take in order to kill them. And they all have to be delivered at once, so they all wear off at once. I, I I didn't take any chances. If I need somebody dead by Super Stim Pack, I just loaded them in. Like, ten of them at a time. I forget if it works by percentage or hey guys. amount of damage. What? Look what I found! I, I can't. I'm eight seconds behind, remember? Oh, holy crap! Is that what I think it is? Yes. Is that a blow dryer? 
Did oh. you finally oh, find a blow like dryer? A yeah, my yeah, hair, man. man. Your hair has been, your hair has been awful, man, for like the whole series. Yeah, under a hat. Do you? Can you imagine how bad hat hair you have by now? You've oh. been wearing six hats oh. for like weeks now. All those hours walking around in the radiation. Ugh. Oh. You're gonna you know, lethal in something fierce. Lethal doses of killing radiation lingering around after 200 years when a bomb hit and destroyed thriving metropolises. That is really hard on like the follicles. Yeah. You need a way to get nutrients in there to help fight split ends. And it's level up time. Our last level up. Yep. Probably. Yep. Alright, what are you putting them in? Energy weapons? Do energy weapons and big guns. In case I find something I want to shoot at. Okay, uh... And we want Grim Reaper Sprint. What's that? That's the one that there restores all one. of your action points after killing someone in bats. Wait, isn't that just Grim Reaper Spirit? No, I'm pretty sure it's Sprint. I it thought spirit. it was spirit. Maybe it is spirit. I, I, I don't know. You've referred to that before, and I was like, "What is he talking about?" I thought it was a broken steel add-on uh, before that I'd missed. Although either way, if it if it restores your action points, sprint would make sense. Oh, the sound effect on that gun is so groovy, and so is the blue sparkle effects. Oh my goodness, look at these green oh, and shit. blue and red, it's like we are having a <laughs> rave where everyone dies. <laughs> it's like a blade kind of rave. I Which is the best that guy? I spam. Ultimately, it looks like a G.I. Joe episode. <laughs> yeah, all these projectiles flying, nobody ever getting hit, and definitely nobody ever, ever dying. <laughs> yes, exactly like a G.I. Joe episode. All these people trained in combat all their lives using future weapons and nobody is able to end anyone else's life. Or even <laughs> injure anyone, appreciably. Yeah. Wow, basically. I love that sparkle effect. That is so groovy. I, I Groovy is the perfect word for it. Trippy is a close second. What is I'm gonna the purpose run out of, of ammo here. The top? Besides being 50s, I mean. Like, you think you, think you can look down that? Like, a, like, iron sights? Well, you could if this game had iron sights. <laughs> it doesn't have iron sights, it just has mild telescopic vision. <laughs> you just crane there your really neck forward. really not any more ammo in here? Damn, I remember getting more alien blaster stuff, but I guess maybe not. Alas. Was that like a giant cockroach back there? A giant rad rose? Uh, I don't know. I thought it looked like a missile. Also, what the hell is up with that guy? Yeah, why is he not <laughs> dead like eight times over? Well, these are like the elite squad of the Enclave, which makes sense that they leave them in their base all the time. Yeah, not send them anywhere just to do anything useful. What I really meant was, why do they just explode with Kool-Aid red puffballs every time you shoot them? Is that some sort of armor? Uh... No, that's the metal blast. I don't really recall that happening to everybody else. Look at this blue lighting in the room. He's shooting green. You're shooting red, and there's it's like yellow Star lights Wars. here and there. Really, and it's really nice. Yeah. It might even <laughs> like I would. Co in another context, I might complain that they had overdone it. Oh, this game's too colorful, but really, after that long drought of brown-green, this is just like, yeah, bring on the color. Can't have too much. Kind of... 
kind of makes me regret going with uh, small guns every playthrough. You know, I never once yeah. even considered energy weapons. That, Only the now, way. at the end, do you understand. I guess I feel like small energy weapons are so much rarer. Yeah, but, but this is small three you're talking about. The game breaks at like level six. Yeah, I would always, once I got my energy weapon, I would just trade for, rather than trade for more useless caps, um, I just used energy, I would just trade for energy weapon ammo. And so by the time I got a good day. energy weapon, um, I had so much ammunition, it was ridiculous. And then, you know, as Josh said, I'm sure at some point the game just breaks and then you've got plenty. Oh yeah. Once you start being able to sneak attack with your energy weapon, and this was even before I had uh, Anchorage and the suit of brokenness, um, the game gets ridiculously easy. And then you would install broken steel and fight reavers and m overlords at level 10, and then the game is broken in the other direction. So, actually, now that we mentioned steel, like, like the broken, broken energy weapon, do you first? Uh, was that. Sorry, wait, actually. No, I was going to ask Josh, so. Does destroying this giant crawler mean just go and shoot everybody driving it? Uh, no, we actually need to get to the launch pad. Um, which should be. somewhere over here. No, oh wait, no, I know the procedure for destroying crawlers. You have to get to this open area plateau where for some reason uh, you can snipe through a window a frogman sitting at some controls and every so often the window will close again and then he'll drop dudes on you. I'm going to wait patiently for nobody to get the reference. I don't know what... Because nobody played MDK2. No, I don't know. I did play MDK2, but I haven't two, played I MDK2 in, f like, ten years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I played that game so long ago, that was like a lifetime ago, for me. Yeah, I I played it, like, a little bit in the day, and then I, after I became actually good enough to succeed in it, I reinstalled it a while ago. That's a series that should not have died. That series, in fact, I think, died when it was getting good. The yeah, first I mean, one was a little game. rough and re yeah. First yeah. one was a good idea, but a little rough and repetitive. The second one was a lot better, and you could just see this. This was a franchise waiting to happen, and then it vanished. Yeah, it actually shipped with my computer. Well, with my family's computer. I uh, love this so gun how about that so Fallout much 3? more than the goddamn Gauss rifle. Oh yeah, That's speaking it. of the Gauss rifle. Actually, this is what I was going to mention earlier. Was my I, I forget oh, was my rant shit. about the Gauss rifle ammo? Was that on camera or was that like? Between uh, I do not remember. I don't recall it. I don't think it was on camera. Okay, so Gauss rifle. What the? Uh, I was in. I, I knew it was in Fallout 2. I think it was probably in Fallout 1 as well. I'm not sure. Uh, in any case, it uh, shoots two millimeter ammo. I don't because understand. That's... Oh yeah, this this rant was on camera. Oh, was it on camera? Yeah. I don't understand what keeps, like, is that, like, the effect of the Gauss rifle just, like, bouncing off a wall and hitting me and then, like, killing me in two seconds? I know you still had a third of your health down. Well, more than a I third? Looked. Let's try this the, uh, smarter way. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Why start now? <laughs> <laughs> what, you mean exit the game and go play something good? Well, aside from that... Is <laughs> Not like murder your something allies. like something like the original Fallout. I did that just to make everybody drink. Why are these guys all naked? What the? <laughs> Don't look a gift horse in the mouth, Josh. He's got the Hellfire armor, but he's not wearing it. What the hell is this? <laughs> Well, you know, it gets it gets hot up there. It's called Hellfire Armor for a reason, Josh. And they figured, oh, what, what the idiot fuck? would be what idiot would be stupid enough to attack the, like this massive mine crawler thing? Seriously. 
What total fool I put it in his pocket and that apparently gave away my entire position to everybody. You put it in his po you put it in his boxers, that's what you put it in. I like to think that no matter how good your sneak is, I'm gonna notice somebody putting things in my boxer shorts if that's all I'm wearing. Is that a live hand grenade in your boxers or Wow, this armor is way better than the Chinese stealth armor when it's broken. Oh, you put on their armor. And that's why yeah. you're not dropping dead. <laughs> Hold on, guys. Just wait while I work through, like, eight bottles of food. I just realized it was breakfast well, time, I need you to see. become unencumbered. At least that would be preferable. Wow, I'm beginning to think this is a hard battle here at the end of the game. Yeah, Josh, know. ingest all of it. Now is your moment. Become like undo a drug-addled god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm out of stim packs. Awesome. Okay, here goes everything. Okay. <laughs> I friggin' called it. Just wanna see Down it. in one! Down in one! Wow, what a binge. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Uh, Chopper, what are they doing? What is he doing? Just working through some crazy Raul Duke drug stash. You come around the corner and you are glowing floating two feet off the ground with light coming out of your <laughs> eyes. Oh, come on! Why is this suddenly so inaccurate? I think it's bouncing off the wall there. Oh, fuck it. Fine, I'll use your stupid alien blaster. <laughs> you had a ammo for oh, that. Oh, what the hell? I've become addicted to everything. <laughs> <laughs> Guys... You might as well just start drinking now. Cause, yeah. Do you you may be inebriated dudes? beyond repair, Josh, but at least you bring our readers Well, I need to get up that staircase, which means this needs to- Oh, god damn it! It's like it has some kind of repulsion field on it that prevents it from actually hitting what I need it to hit. <laughs> Man, I'm beginning to like think that being on drugs doesn't up. improve your aim. What? That's ridiculous. Alright, let's do this one more time, but with like... Less of me suddenly managing to piss off everybody at once while I'm sneaking. Oh, shit, I probably just... I, I'd be fine with less of you being murdered. <laughs> That'd be cool, too. <laughs> did, you just, did you just blow it, Jack? Possibly. What the... There... Oh. Uh, I've got pixels the size of dinner plates, so don't ask me to comment on what's uh, going no, on. This guy's not wearing his armor, either. That's so weird. Yeah, this, you know? that was really disappointing to be b beaten by a group of naked men. Well, they put armor back on. <laughs> yeah, usually Josh has to pay for that sort of thing. <laughs> hey, now. What am I in danger of? Um... Why do I always take that? Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> Did you just take it off? I accidentally hit left click instead of right click. <laughs> uh, they are. No armor.
Maybe, like, all of them are trying hardcore runs of Fallout 3. Like, <laughs> okay guys, so it's been really easy really killing the PC with the Hellfire armor on. Maybe, maybe we should, uh, maybe we should make things a little more difficult. Can you so, no armor, everybody? no stim packs. Um... Probably. I mean, we're doing the traditional. Uh, yeah, that would be the there, traditional application the of sneaking. Yeah. As in not fighting everybody. How do I get into this building? There's your door. There you are. Oh look, 50 bottle caps. That's gonna be incredibly useful. That is it. good. That's what we needed. That's gonna turn the tide of this battle for us. <laughs> it's 50 bottle caps. Like, especially if you load it into your gun or whatever. Bottle cap ammunition. Your golf gun. Let's see if we can finish this uh, with the alien blaster. How much ammo do you have for that? Twelve shots. My money's on no. <laughs> I think five of those shots are going over the opponent, your opponent's heads. Um, five of them are going into various ambient geometry, and two of them are going into Brotherhood of Steel people who just happen to be passing through. <laughs> there's, there's fire, Josh. There's, there's fire I or something that. that's happening to you. That's our little tactical advice. See, what would you do without us? I'm just trying to help. That's why you have me here. Yeah, that's, that's really nice of you. It's what you Wait, why did for. I stop? Hey, freaking let me open the. Wow. So I found a use for the heavy incinerator. It prevents me from opening the goddamn pit boy. Oh. Huh? Yeah, when you're getting, like, pushed by something, you can't open the Pip-Boy. Huh. That's a cheap exploit. Yeah. <laughs> See, like, if all three was a uh, multiplayer game, that would get patched in 12 sec. Yeah. You would just have your teammates running around incinerating you, uh, griefing you to prevent you from arming your weapons. What is this? You want a duel, huh? Oh, yeah. Let's do this. Oh, that guy died. Really? This is just like my Dark Messiah LP. Only engaging. And it has two intelligent commenters. Alright. So... We are almost to the end. Wow, man, Where's it feels enemy? like we're in Tron here. <laughs> yeah. Although Tron 2.0 didn't suck, as, as far as I've heard. That is very confusing to me. <laughs> Especially since, I'm, I'm gonna be honest, turn in my nerd card right here. All right. I didn't like Tron that much. So here's the big choice. We got access to a satellite uh, missile system. The Citadel, um. now. Yes, I was just gonna say kill the Brotherhood. Death to the Brotherhood. Yeah, we can pick to kill the Citadel, Project Purity, Megaton, Rivet City Carrier, or Adams Air Force Base Platform. <laughs> we have to pick <laughs> one of them? <laughs> I, I don't Why? know. Why? Well, How let's many? start Nuke with the Citadel. everything! <laughs> but start Next with the Citadel. Let's see. Yeah, start with the Citadel. Yeah, just in case you only get one. Payloads, it looks like. Okay, yeah. Let's yeah. You have to start with our priority targets. Oh my Hello, god, that would be perfect. Goodbye, Brotherhood. Oh, this will lock all warheads to target and lock on this station. So, uh... Sit it up. Yes! Like, this it. is generally, like, the, the end thing, is you could choose whether to kill the Citadel or this place. The Citadel! Fuck you guys! Goodbye, Woo! Overlords! Let's... Let's see how you let's see your plot armor save you from that. 
<laughs> You're right, Elder Lions. <laughs> We're n I'm not a mercenary. I'm not getting paid for this. I'm doing I'm this. You guys free. decided to pay me. You know. I'm doing Maybe this out of the goodness of my out. own heart. But really, why didn't the Enclave push that button? You mean they've had the ability to yeah. blow up the Citadel <laughs> all this frickin' time? <laughs> Instead they wasted it on just killing Liberty Prime while he was outside of the Citadel. They just needed a good fairy to arrive. Like, but don't you see? The power to destroy the Citadel is always within you. Oh, you mean this switch? Yeah, I guess that should have occurred to us a long time ago. <laughs> I knew we installed that thing for a reason. Seriously, how do I get out of here? That's a good question. Good thing you didn't set the nuke for this. Yeah. Oh, uh, can you yeah, go back to the Citadel like now? Good ending. Uh, I don't know. Oh, please tell me you can go back to the Citadel and smell the ashes. Can you get like up the on the deck? Sequence. Oh, All right. see, we're going up. Uh, oh, we go. This confirms why my is... sealed hypothesis that you would finish the why Brotherhood is everything before exploding? you... Wait, what? What? Everything why? is exploding here, I don't understand. <laughs> Actually, no it didn't. It's just like bombs went off on the surface. It, di it didn't explode or anything. Yeah, what? I don't know. Glitch. Get to the chopper! So the Brotherhood just rescued us. <laughs> <laughs> gonna be one hell of a homecoming. Yeah, probably about five. Also, probably enough. if uh, <laughs> if if you went into the purifier and turned it off, then uh, then it's Sarah who rescues you in her vertebrate. But now she's dead, and I'm happy. Two for two, both lions. We put them in the circuit. <laughs> so okay, Josh, this is going to be the most difficult thing you've ever attempted: keeping a poker face. <laughs> Whatever, man, I'm wearing You just start tittering. The, the whole like, oh my god, the Citadel is destroyed! You're like, <laughs> it was you. You did this. You what? How do you know that I did this? You've killed them all. Kill this traitor. Kill oh, him. good. God damn you to hell. Did he really... How does he think this is going to go down, exactly? <laughs> I know, you just <laughs> killed the entire Enclave. So that you could go into so we we've, we've done nothing but do the enclave's job for them. We turned on the purifier even though they Pretty much. It and they didn't turn it on. And then we turned on their magical nuke machine even though they didn't turn that on. Yeah, and no, don't get me wrong. I love that we have the option to do this. I mean, you know, listen to our is, how ecstatic we are. But what, why would it make any sense to get that far and suddenly decide, Oops, I'm gonna nuke the people I've been working for pro bono for the past few weeks. Yeah, it kind of needed, the game kind of needed a little more setup for that. Yeah, like maybe if somebody was, I mean, honestly it probably would have been enough for somebody outside to say, Hey, I bet, uh, uh, dare ya, 50 bucks, blow up the Allen Clay. <laughs> and no, bro, this is it enough. And you're like, you're on. Wow. Okay, double or nothing project <laughs> purity. It's too bad we couldn't get them both. Sadly, we don't have anything to turn in the Brotherhood of Steel holotags into anymore. Oh. <laughs> yes, I have we a... Because <laughs> we could have a lot of tags. I found about 50 holotags. Yeah, they all uh, died in a nuclear holocaust when some handsome dude <laughs> dropped a bunch of bombs on their base. <laughs> Hey, where are you going? Oh no you don't. Oh what the Hey! 
<laughs> Wisely oh, done. He escaped. New Bastard. quest objective. Hunt him down. You've lost karma. You've lost karma for shooting <laughs> at those turrets. Oh! <laughs> Heads up. <laughs> Did you even lose karma for nuking the citadel? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. I was about to say. <laughs> ah. Oh, come on! Ooh. That was my last shot. Okay, so, um, that is the end of the Fallout 3 plotline. We killed everything. I'm kind of okay with this, actually. Enclave is dead. Brotherhood of Steel, dead. Uh, and Megaton, dead. It's too bad we didn't do the quest that lets us, uh, let Roy into Ten Penny so that he kills everybody. Because then we would have, and then all that would be left is Rivet City. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, why would you nuke Rivet City? What possible reason would you have to do that? I do like how they just finally woke up to the fact that I am an evil bastard and decided to shoot me. <laughs> oh, hey, we've got this laser rifle. Him. We've officially completed everything. That is <laughs> Tesla cannon ammo bouncing off of a wall. I like that you died. I like to think that that's the canonical ending. Is after killing everyone in the world, you died in a simple <laughs> gunfight. You fired six. Le you fired six rounds into a lamppost, and then some guy <laughs> shot you in the face. <laughs> So that's okay. it, that's Fallout 3. That yep. was. And, guys, final analysis? I would say... Not the greatest game I've ever played. <laughs> I would say... No. It's I would say... It's... It's a fun game marred by horrible, offensively obvious flaws that should have been fixed. Yeah, and I mean, really, it's not the gameplay that's the problem. Like, the... As far no. as, like, gameplay and everything and like just the general like construction of the game it's fine it's just the writing is so bad the worst writing i've seen in a very very long time i cannot say the same unfortunately yeah you did just and play claude of cthulhu and in fact you just wrapped that series up uh, recently as well and yeah for those of you that have not checked that out as bad as we've given it to, to Fallout 3 here, Claude of Cthulhu has all of these flaws and more to a greater degree. It is really an amazing piece of work. Yeah. Uh, I mostly agree with what Seamus said. So, do we want to talk about next season? Yeah, let's talk about it. We are doing... Barbie Horse the, Adventures. Uh, the personal... No, we are not doing that. You can, you know, ignore everything Red Scar never says. Um, we are doing... Second Life. Seamus' favorite game ever, Bioshock. Yeah, and we're getting a new host. Yep, Seamus is show. leaving the show. Yes. <laughs> uh, we, we booted out Seamus after a disagreement over contract. Um, we all agreed that six strippers was a little outside our budget. Uh, so we brought in somebody new, and I think they we're going to nice like them. They were nice guys. I don't know why you wouldn't pay for them. Uh, no, I'll be staying on the show, but we will also... Mumbles will be joining us. She was a big fan of Bioshock. I am critical of... I can recognize why Bioshock is widely loved. Um, I do not hate Bioshock the way I was disappointed with Fallout 3. Completely different thing. But I do have criticisms of Bioshock. And so, we will have both love and hate for the next game. So it won't be yeah. all hate all the time. <laughs> so look for that um, when we decide to post it. I don't know if we're going to take a break or not, because this is like a week and a half before this episode goes up. But we'll see you then.